Hello there, welcome to the Saroy channel. Thank you so very much for joining me this evening, wherever you are in the world. And I truly hope that you're doing exceedingly well and that you've had the most marvellous weekend and are about to embrace a fabulous new week. But before we get started, don't forget to get that lovely hot cup of coffee or cocoa because I've got an amazing story for you. And I don't know if you recall the story that I shared with you last week about the lizard man in South Africa. Well, there have been several sightings of this creature, and so I've got another extraordinary story that is just going to knock your socks off. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell and the thumbs up. Dear Sarah and all your lovely listeners, I'm so excited to be writing to you. I simply cannot believe that I have this incredible opportunity to share my extraordinary story with you and your listeners. It would appear that you have an op awesome open audience that has very unprejudiced, unbiased minds and are not judgmental and condemning, which gives me the confidence and courage to share my extraordinary story with you. I really do feel that this was all supremely, divinely orchestrated because I have never heard of your channel before. And it was by random chance I found myself listening to Sandra's phenomenal tale all the way from South Africa and those lizard monsters that her grandfather's farm worker encountered in Mahollisburg. I am only awestruck and amazed and encouraged and fortified by her boldness to come forward and reveal her extraordinary story. I truly never ever believed that I myself would actually have the guts to share mine for fear of being ridiculed and disbelieved. My story has remained a secret for many long years, that is until now of course. My name is Melissa and I'm from South Africa and I also encountered those bizarre lizard-like creatures in the Mahalisburg area that the worker Simon described so eloquently to your audience of listeners. And to date, I have absolutely no idea what they actually are. But I will say this, they are insidiously evil. I grew up on a farm in Mahollisburg in southern Africa. Mahollisburg has been occupied by humans dating back for two million years, known as the cradle of mankind. Believe it or not, it is a hundred times older than Mount Everest and half the age of the earth. After World War II, many of the local farmers in the area started producing tobacco, vegetables or growing oranges in this part of the world, not to mention beef farming, which became increasingly popular. My father was an orange farmer, so growing up we would be surrounded by the uplifting aroma of oranges that literally wafted all over the valley, and it was the most glorious, wonderful citrus smell that always elevated your mood and lifted your spirits. I believe that the citrus scent was just so incredibly uplifting and also very strengthening to the immune system that we never had a single sick day for a day in our lives. Believe it or not, I gather that they have actually used orange oil and vaporized it in hospitals in America to uplift patients and to speed up the healing process with phenomenal results. And I promise you, believe me, it works. Mahollisburg consists of vast areas of natural open wilderness that we call felt, with lots of mountainous outcrops, valleys, prolific indigenous trees and lots of wild flowers growing liberally around the landscape. When I was about 13 years old, my parents sent me to boarding school in Peter Maritzburg during the 80s period and so I would always return home to our farm during the holidays which I simply loved. I really loved the school holidays because growing up I relished spending copious amounts of time out of doors by the pretty gushish, gushing stream that meandered through our farm and was surrounded by weeping willows that were always stacked with hundreds upon hundreds of little rounded nests that belonged to the bright yellow weaver birds that loved making their nests over the stream. The bright yellow weavers were the male birds and the females were a much duller sallow yellow colour. I always used to feel sorry for the male weaver birds because growing up they built their nests for the fastidious punctilious female weaver and the more often or not, that female weaver would tear up the nest in utter disgust after the male had more made the most phenomenal looking nest for her. But as far as Miss Weaver was concerned, nothing was ever good enough for her. Until about one hundred nests later, of course. Then, after all that tiresome, laborious work, she would finally be satisfied. Growing up, my father would relentlessly tease my mother. He called her his sweet little weaver bird, 
because she, he said that she was always so particular and difficult to please, just like the female weaver. As a kid, we spent so much time running about our orange farm with my brother Thomas, who was only a year younger than myself. In those days, we did not have the modern amenities and accessories that kids have today, like Netflix, computer games, Instagram and Facebook. We also never had mobile phones growing up. So our playground was quite literally the natural world. As it is invariably incredibly hot during the summer months out here in South Africa, especially on our land, we would spend countless hours swimming in our pool playing all manner of games, like Marco Polo. We would also ride our ponies across the countryside, and we were both very keen and very good riders. We also loved attending to our horses every need, washing them down and brushing them and till their coats gleamed with a lovely hazelnut colour. The first time I saw one of those lizard-like humanoids was when I was playing with my brother on our farm by the pebbly stream. I do remember we were trying to balance on those precarious sheer rocks to see who could cross without falling into the water first. It was a test of who had the best balance between the two of us, and I'm pleased to say I'm almost always one. Suddenly we both heard this most horrible, low guttural, throaty growl, and we were startled and terrified by the noise. But as kids, we were also irrationally curious and very inquisitive. My brother told me to shush, shh, shh. As we ventured forward, that was when we saw this hideous thing, and I have never, ever in my entire life ever seen something so hideously freakish and grotesque in all my born days. This colossal lizard-like humanoid was eight feet tall, five foot wide, and had human-like arms and long bow-like legs that were bulky and powerful as well as thick and sturdy. It also possessed a very chunky tail that I believed helped the creature to balance as it stood on two feet and was clearly bipedal. You know the distinct markings that you often see on colourful snakes? Well, the skin on this creature was exactly like that, but it was bright red and tawny brown in its markings, and this was all over its body. It had a rounded face, much like a Komodo dragon, with a huge mouth and dagger-shaped sharp teeth, and it had lizard-like brown eyes and a large flicking tongue that I think was a sensor of some kind. My brother and I were so terrified by this horrendous-looking creature because we were in no doubt if he saw us he would eat us alive, but we could see he was growling at something else, and we realised that it was another one of these creatures that was equally as ugly and grotesque and vicious as he was. But this creature was yellow and orange, and it possessed red markings on its face, and was a whole foot shorter than the other creature. I could not believe that the creatures were fighting over this human corpse. I recognised the T-shirt that the man was wearing almost immediately as belonging to one of the citrus workers, a man called Jacob, who was a worker on our family-run farm, a lovely person that my brother and I really warmed to because he was always telling us funny jokes and making us laugh. My eyes filled with tears when I observed the sorrowful, tragic scene unfolding before my very eyes, like something out of your worst, most horrifying nightmare, and knowing that Jacob's family would be devastated, devastated by his demise was even more horrifying. I could see that the head was disconnected from the neck and was lying separate from the body like a lone soccer ball. I thought it was extremely odd that these creatures were not willing to share the kill together, so to speak. The smaller of the two humanoids relented, surrender and resigned, and accepted defeat to the larger reptilian, which was just as well, I thought, because if he had not given in, I'm pretty certain he would have been killed. We watched him bustle away on his thick bow legs. We observed with absolute horror this ghastly creature gobbling and devouring Jacob's body, and he was a messy, disgusting eater, splattering pieces of the corpse all over the place like cake crumbs being flung around a kitty's kid's playground. He made light work of Jacob's body, and had eaten everything in about fifteen minutes. My brother and I hightailed it back to our home as fast as we possibly could, to tell everyone that Jacob had been tragically killed and murdered by a hideously ugly lizard man. We were both crying hysterically and were frantically terrified. Imagine our shock and confusion when Jacob, our farm worker, walked into the room and my parents assured us that he was indeed not dead. 
My brother and I ran open-armed towards Jacob, hugging him tightly between our sobs and saying, You're alive! You're alive! He looked at us with a shocked expression on his face and said, Is this supposed to be some kind of a sick joke or something? Of course I'm alive! As you can imagine, my brother and I were so confused because we rarely believed we'd actually seen Jacob being devoured and murdered by this heinous lizard-like humanoid. But maybe it really was a case of misidentification and someone that looked remarkably like Jacob, but I'm glad to say it wasn't him, had been killed instead. It was all decidedly odd, but my brother and I know what we saw and it was definitely real. We did hear that a couple of workers from a neighbouring farm had quite simply just vanished without a trace, so maybe one of these men was indeed killed by the lizard. The next time my brother and I saw that lizard-like creature again was when a man of very great prominence who was exceedingly wealthy and who travelled the entire world spontaneously came and visited our farm. None of your listeners would have ever heard of this man before, but I can assure you he did mix in very distinguished high-profile circles among the elite in South Africa, so to speak. Even my father was astonished and surprised by this curious, unexpected, spontaneous visitation from such a very distinguished, affluent and high-profile guest, because he did not even know the man in question. My mother welcomed this man warmly and gave him some coffee and some milk tart to eat, and she sat him down and fussed over him, but there was something odd about him. His reactions were very strange, and his behaviour was exceedingly odd. There was something that was not quite right about him, but I couldn't put my finger on what it was. He then proceeded to ask if he could actually go for a walk on his own, which was also pretty strange behaviour from a guest that my parents were entertaining, but they were eager to oblige his every need, and so they reluctantly let him explore our farm all on his own without any guidance or direction. He told my parents he just wanted to observe all the orange groves for himself, but my brother and I noticed that he circumnavigated the orange groves and bypassed them and went straight to the stream. My brother and I decided to follow him and spy on him because we knew that his behaviour was not right. I think we sensed that something was insidiously artful about him. There was something slippery and unscrupulous that gave us the creeps and made our hair stand on edge. The next thing I knew that this conniving, treacherous man was literally standing on the edge of the stream and, believe it or not, we couldn't believe it ourselves, he was actually talking to two lizard creatures both whom were very colossal and were a plain brown colour, not like the bright coloured ones we'd seen before, and they seemed very intent on their conversation with this man. They all appeared to discern each other. We did notice that the conversation seemed very intense, critical and of a serious consequential nature. They talked between each other for a while, and then the man came back to the house and told my parents that their, oranges grow, their orange groves were spectacularly beautiful and enchanting. My brother interjected immediately and said, But you didn't go to the orange groves. You were at the stream talking to the very big human lizard. The artful duplicitous man looked embarrassed and said, Sorry, I don't know what your kid is talking about. After the man had left, my brother and I told my parents that this man had been talking to human-like lizards, and I backed him up on that. Within a day or so, I found myself sitting in a psychologist's office undergoing these strange tests, and then it was my brother's turn to be interrogated. I found out that both my parents thought my brother and I had lost the plot, so to speak, and were imagining these strange lizard creatures on our land, but both my brother and I were declared as completely sane, and of sound mind. I knew my parents did not believe our tales about the lizards, and so I began to warn my brother never ever to speak of it again, or people would think we'd lost our marbles. My brother was so determined to take a photograph of one of those lizards with a new Instamatic camera that our parents had given us, so that they would believe us. We literally hung around that stream for many days without any hope of a sighting, but I was terrified of actually seeing one of those grotesque creatures again, because they were so duplicitous and evil, with a very heavy menacing energy around them. One day we saw one of those creatures again, and my brother actually took a photograph of it, and I was so excited, because we managed to get a picture. We did this while we were hiding behind the tree. It was just standing there in the sun, flicking its tongue like a snake, and it appeared to be basking and enjoying the sun, almost as if it was sunbathing. 
Suddenly it turned around and looked in our direction, and my heart almost missed a beat. We heard it unleash this warning growl, as if it was saying, I know you're there. It did not physically see us, but I think it did feel us and sense us. Thankfully it didn't pursue us, but disappeared from our sight. As you can imagine, my brother and I could not wait to get the photograph developed from the Photoshop, and imagine our immense surprise and horror when all you could see was this huge grey smoky haze where the creature had stood. I emphatically believe that they have some natural cloaking device, because we know what we saw, but there was nothing to be seen in the photograph except for this grey splodge. So there you are, that is my incredible story, that I am so relieved to finally get off my chest. Although I would like to remain anonymous, for obvious reasons of course. My dad and my mother died within two years of each other, about twenty years ago and my brother Sir Thomas sadly died in a motorbike collision five years ago, which is such a dreadful pity, because I would have loved him to share his side of the story with you. My parents' orange farm was sold to some high-ranking official who got rid of all our orange groves very, very sadly, and I have no idea or clue what he, what he uses the place for nowadays, but I do know two things. One is that there is something very intriguing going on on my father's land, and something evil is going on with those lizards. But who or what they are, I cannot speculate and imagine. But it does appear that some of your listeners have a greater understanding of these curious things, far more so than I do. Well, there you are. Isn't that the most extraordinary story? Thank you so very much for sharing it. I don't know what these lizard creatures actually are, and I would love to know, but I've absolutely got no idea. A lot of people, a lot of my listeners do seem to have an idea about what these creatures could be and if you do don't forget to just let me know about it because I'm curious as, as the rest of them are. I, I do know that there have been sightings of these extraordinary lizard humanoids around the world and it's interesting that both of these cases actually occurred in the Maholisberg area which is utterly extraordinary that both of them should appear there where the cradle of mankind is as you say which is a very old area. So what it has to do with these creatures, I have no idea. As for the orange oil on your farm, I happen to know quite a lot about essential oils. I happen to know that they are the most incredible products. You have to get the pure ones though, not the stuff that you'd get at Walmart. It, you have to get the real deal and they can transform your lives. I mean, I use essential oils all the time, particularly orange oil and lemon and lemon balm. They're just amazingly refreshing, but they do boost your immune system. So if you are prone to colds and flu and you do have an, a compromised immune system, get those oils because they're fabulous. But also, um, they're just so uplifting to have a smell like that around your home. You really will see a difference in your mood. It's very elevating. Well, I hope you all enjoyed the story. Love to everybody who's listening, wherever you are in the world. Fascinating subjects we're talking about, isn't it? It's so exciting, all these interesting stories that we're hearing. I don't know about you, but I'm loving every part of this journey. Until next time, goodbye and good night.